Colin here, and it's great to have you back for another Way Back Wednesday. Let's go back to a 2012 podcast, episode number nine, about the psychology of your dental website. Now, even three years later, this episode still has critical information about what your website tells both existing patients and prospects about your practice. Listen to find out what your website says about you, or if you have a case of what I call the wee-wee problem. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Smartbox Web Video Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Receiver, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about the psychology of your dental website. What is your dental website really saying to your dental prospects and your dental patients? But first, um, got a little housekeeping. I got some uh, important announcements to make. I uh, just found out this week that I'm going to be a dad into this year, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, the wife and I have been married for coming up on two years now, so uh, pretty excited, pretty excited. So that's some good news. Um, I'm actually heading to the airport right now, um, heading up to Jersey area to do a premium package video shoot for a uh, very savvy dentist that we've worked with for several years, uh, doing a lot with sleep apnea, doing a lot with dental implants, um, has a CAT scan in his office, very, very cool stuff. So um, I'm going to have about 20 minutes here, maybe 25 minutes depending on traffic before I get to the airport. So this will be, be a pretty quick podcast, but uh, we're going to touch on uh, the psychology of your website what your website really says, uh, pitfalls to avoid on your website, um, as well as the, the latter part of the podcast, we're going to touch on a little bit about referrals, how to get referrals, what's going on in your patients' minds when they're giving referrals, and how to exploit that to your advantage to get more referrals. So, um, you know, the first thing that I guess what really prompted this podcast on this specific topic was we've been doing a lot of these uh, swift kick video critiques. Uh, if you haven't seen them yet, um, click on the um, uh, video button, I think, at the top, or, or training maybe. Yeah, click on training at the top of the page right here, and then click on swift kick package. And if you scroll down about two thirds of the way down the page, you'll see some of the video critiques that we've done uh, here recently. And what I've been seeing is a lot of, a lot of the wee-wee problem. Um, you know, I've, I've blogged about it a couple times before, but the wee-wee problem is essentially where your website just has I and we all over it. Uh, I am so great, we are so great, we do such great work. Um, you know, we do better work than the guy down the road. And you know, you have to differentiate yourself. Um, you have to show that you are better than the guy down the road. But flat out coming out and just saying, you know, we're the best guy in Dallas, Texas, or Chicago, Illinois, um, you know, it, that, that's just not getting the job done. Um, you know, it's one thing if, if your patients say it. It's completely another if you say it yourself. It, it, comes off as, uh, you know, kind of self-absorbed, kind of arrogant. I mean, a, a lot of bad things come out when you try to say that you're the best. Um, you know, the, the secret to differentiating yourself and letting your patients know you're better is kind of like I hinted to a second ago. If your patients say it, now it's okay because it's coming from a an unbiased third party that you were able to help. Um, that carries a lot of trust. That carries a lot of weight with it. Um, and, you know, if you get your patients to say it, uh, now it's very believable. If you say it yourself, 
well, you know, I, uh, I can sit here and say that we're the best dental whip company on the face of the earth. But, um, you know, that doesn't really uh, matter to dentists. You know, a dentist comes to our website, they look at the work we've done, they look at the video stuff we're doing, uh, the, the marketing automation to stay in front of your patients, um, and, you know, the phone tracking, and, and that's what sells them. That is our differentiating factor. So you have to come up with a way to differentiate yourself uh, in a way that your patients can understand that isn't you just touting um, yourself with a subjective adjective, you know, best, better, great, gentle, whatever it is. You have to position yourself. You know, your patients are searching right now every county of the country, every state, every city. Patients are searching for answers to their problems right now. You know, they're looking for answers to their missing teeth. They're looking for solutions to their sore dentures. They're looking for a way to fix their, their snoring at night or their, you know, they're waking up tired in the morning and they think they have sleep apnea and they wanna fix that. Or, uh, you know, the boomers, the baby boomers, um, many dentists are getting into Botox, you know, and that's a huge market right now that's, uh, you know, especially in the dental field, uh, pretty untapped. Um, you know, there's there's guys searching out there for ways to look younger, the, the Nugenic stuff, the Botox. And if you can enter the conversation that's already in place, you know, just because, uh, you know, a, I hear dentists say a lot, well, you know, why would I advertise for that? Who's searching for that? Well, there's a lot of people searching. And if you can position yourself as the answer to that question they're asking, you're going to be able to be that source of information and you're going to be that go-to guy. Uh, they're going to see a couple of your videos, see your website, and as they read more and more about you, learn more and more about you, you continue to answer their questions and give them great information, you're going to be their, their hero. You're going to be their go-to guy, their expert. And, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of harped on this in, in other podcasts as well, but the currency of the future is information. Uh, you know, I, I was at a dental conference last year, and one of the keynote presenters, um, got up on stage and talked about uh, how you know you don't want to put too much information on your dental website you want to make them call you and you want to uh, just put enough out there so they know what you do and you know you do a good job but you don't want to give them all the answers because you want them to call your office and I just wholeheartedly completely 100% disagree with that approach um, you need to be putting everything on your website, all kinds of information, give them all the answers up front, because that does two things. One, it makes you the expert. You look like you are a god among dentists. Uh, you know, no disrespect intended to, to our Lord, but uh, you know, you, you look like the man. You've got all the answers. You've got the biggest website filled with information. Much of it um, you yourself are explaining. You know, one of my big pet peeves is uh, dental websites that have this stock video on it. You know, when you click on it and it's from Docs or it's from these, these companies that just cookie cutter it and they put your name and text right above it. And it's these, these educational videos where they, they show the, the titanium post going into your jaw and they show the locator and, and they show this technical stuff. Your patients don't want to know that. They don't want to know anything more about that than you want to know how your plumbing works in your house. All you want to know is when you flush the toilet, the, the, the stinky stuff goes away. And that's all your patients want to know is that when they bite down, they're going to be able to chew. When they go to sleep, they're going to be rested. When they go to the dentist, they're not going to be in pain. They don't care how it works. And if they do care how it works, there's Wikipedia, there's all kinds of references out there. Uh, that will gladly provide plenty of technical documentation and reference for them to see. But your website should be about you. You should be delivering information. 
showing them how you can help them, showing them how you alleviate their fears, and then let your patients take over. Um, I had a, a uh, dentist from Colorado uh, call me yesterday, and he asked what the role of patient testimonials were on your website. And I said, well, you know, they're, they're kind of multi-role. The first is the obvious. They set you up as the expert. They show your patients that you do good work, that you have satisfied above and beyond people's expectations in the past, and they give you credibility. And the second role that patient testimonials play that many people don't realize is patient testimonials attract the types of people that their testimonial resonates with. So if you do a bunch of patient testimonials and all the testimonials are, are that, uh, you know, Dr. Smith worked with my insurance, uh, he was very good, you know, it, it didn't cost me any money over and above my insurance, um, you know, he maximized it, yada, 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 then you're going to attract the types of patients that want that kind of care. All kinds of insurance, uh, you know, that, that level, that type of care. If your patient testimonials talk about, uh, you know, how you do great implant work and you were very gentle and that, you know, the investment, yes, while the investment was considerable, it's the best money that, that they ever spent, then you're going to attract a little bit higher socioeconomic class of people that have a little bit of money to spend and appreciate a higher level of service. So make sure when you're shooting the testimonials, you, you recognize that uh, you know, your, your testimonials really can do a lot of your, your demographic targeting, a lot of your heavy lifting from a marketing standpoint for you. Um, so, uh, you know, when you're, when you're selecting who to do your testimonials and what kind of work they had done and all this, you know, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Uh, but back to the psychology of your website, um, you know, you have to, if you're going to enter the conversation that's going on in people's minds, you know, people that are searching for missing teeth, loose sore dentures, sleep apnea, can't sleep, not rested, you have to enter that conversation that's already in place. I think we've, we've established that. And to enter that conversation, you really have to see your patient's problems through their eyes. And, you know, one of the, another pet peeves of mine is when you go to a dentist's website and all they have on their website is, is they have a, a menu list, a buffet, I call it a buffet of services that they offer. And they expect the patient to be able to relate to that buffet list to their needs. Your patients don't want to know that you do dental implants. They want to know that you can help them chew again. Your patients don't want to know that um, you do cleanings and whitenings. They want to know that they can smile with confidence. You know, same for sleep apnea. They don't want to know that you can make them a sleep appliance. They want to know that you can help them to wake up in the morning and feel rested. And, you know, we all know the, the uh, heart implications of, uh, you know, the total body health implications of sleep apnea. It's huge. You know, they want to know that they're going to be healthy and, and wellness and all this. So look at it from your patient's eyes. You know, all the wee wee stuff, uh, you know, we do appliances and we do this and we do implants and I do that and we're the best. You're not resonating with your prospects. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of it is true, but you have to resonate with your prospects if you have to speak the same language that they're speaking if you want to attract them. And, uh, you know, what, what, what I hear a lot is they say, Colin, well, you know, I've been doing this marketing and, and I have all this wee wee stuff and it attracts patients and I've been doing this for years and it works. Well, uh, you know, the, it's like playing darts. You can play darts and you can score points on a lot of parts of the dartboard. 
but if you want to specifically target the types, the socioeconomic classes, the demographics that you want, uh, you know, if you want to specifically target boomers that have some money to spend, that need, uh, you know, they want to chew again and they need some dental implants, then you've got to speak directly to that audience. You have to profile that audience and figure out exactly what they want. Uh, you have to, you have to, uh, you know, one of my mentors talks about the target profile and how you take one customer, one patient out of your, all of your patients, out of your thousands of patients, you take one of them and you sit down with them and you talk and you go back and forth and you ask questions and you find out what his real problem, his real pain was. And then you build all of your marketing around this one person. And while it's kind of an extreme approach, building all of your marketing and all of your message around a single person, it does raise a lot of eyebrows uh, in the sense that you now have a very good idea of what it takes to attract that guy. And if that guy is the type of guy that you really want to bring in, well, now you've got a winner. You need to be focused on your patient's problems is what it comes down to. Um, focused on answering your patient's problems because they're searching. And if you can provide that answer, uh, you know, you can be that guy. So the Another example of um, running into some traffic here. Thought it might run a little longer. Another example, um, we've got a uh, dentist on the East Coast that we've been working with uh, a couple of years now. And uh, got, him, got him in real good shape. He's got a, a great website, got a ton of video, all kinds of video. Uh, first page rankings, all kinds of stuff. But. Um, called up and he wants to put uh, a little blurb on his website that he is a patient advocate and I said well why do you want to put that you're a patient advocate and he goes well you know Doug Cullen I I work for the patient I don't just try to sell them what will make me the most money I'm a real patient advocate and I said okay well I'm sure patients appreciate that but if you just put on the top of your website I'm a patient advocate um, I mean, that uh, doesn't really carry a lot of weight. Um, you know, people are savvy. Patients, customers, they're savvy these days. Um, you know, that's one reason why the written testimonial online has fallen so far by the wayside. Patients know that people just make that stuff up. You can go get a, a picture from any number of websites, write something up, type it up, um, put your name on it, put or put a name on it, and paste it on your website. And patients know this. They, this isn't 2000 anymore, 2005. Um, you know that's one reason video is so powerful because the written testimonial just doesn't carry any weight anymore. Um, and you know not just the written testimonial, but simply putting one sentence at the top of your website that says I'm a patient advocate. In this day and age, this is extremely important. Just, just flat out doesn't carry any weight. It's just, um, uh, it's just jargon. It's just kind of a buzzword. Now, if you flip that and you put at the top of your website a quote from a patient that says, "Dr. Phillips is a true patient advocate," now you're getting somewhere. Now you've got an endorsement from a patient who felt like he was being oversold maybe at another dentist and came to this doctor and this doctor that is the patient advocate told him the truth, said, you know, you don't need implants. We could just do a simple one unit crown, save you a couple thousand bucks. Um, now you've got an endorsement from a patient 
that says you're a patient advocate. Now you've got, hopefully, a video testimonial from that patient who says you're a true patient advocate. So, you have to structure your website in a way that enters the conversation that your patients are already engaged in. Um, you know, one another one of, of the comments uh, I get a lot is that dentists who don't understand the internet or haven't really um, uh, haven't really a hundred percent bought into the fact that this internet stuff is going to be around. It is going to be the dominant force going forward that people find information on is these review sites, you know, the Yelps and Angie's List and Google Places, and they think simply, well, if I don't set one up, I don't have to, I don't have to do it. It's kind of like the, the blind eye. And the truth is, your patients are doing it. You're getting reviews online, whether you embrace it or not. And if you embrace it, you can use them, you can, if you get a negative review, you can try to mitigate it best. There's, there's a lot of ways that a negative review can be made out to be very positive, but you have to embrace it. You have to know that you're even getting the review first. But, um, you know, same thing with, uh, with video and with the web. Um, you know, you, you have to embrace it. You have to You don't even have to really understand it. You just have to take advantage of the tools that are at your disposal. And, you know, what we did with this, this doctor, instead of putting, I'm a patient advocate, this is very important, we turned it into a quote of from a patient of his, got a video from a patient of his telling a story about why he's a patient advocate. Now, now he just blows it out of the water. Uh, and, you know, now, He's got this endorsement, this referral from a patient of his who says he's a patient advocate, which carries a ton of weight. Now it's, it has validity. It is believable. And, uh, you know, that, that is kind of the lead into the second part of this video podcast I wanted to chat about, which is referrals. Um, you know, referrals, people give referrals because they're happy with what you did. But more importantly, they give referrals because they want to feel good about giving referrals. And, you know, think about it. The last time you ate somewhere, you ate at a good restaurant, and you told a friend about it. And you said to your friend, this is the best place. They have the best spicy tuna hand rolls, the best sushi ever incredible why are you telling that person that you're telling that person because you're excited because we all have a natural inclination when we have a good experience or we are really happy with something that we want to tell other people about it and people that give testimonials and give referrals they're doing that because they are extremely happy with you um, you know, I've seen it described before with the three faces. You've got the sad face. You've got the okay face. The, and then you've got the excited face. You've got, you know, the, the big excited face. And, um, uh, you know, the, the sad face, obviously, you're probably getting a negative review. The okay face, you didn't wow them. You didn't excite them you're probably not getting a good review over that. But the excited face, the big smiley face, that's the kind of patients you want. Those are the kind that are going to pay, that are gonna stay, and are going to refer. And if you can build your tribe with people with big smiling faces, you're gonna do all right. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're asking a patient for a referral. They do it because they want acknowledgement, because they want to feel good. You've helped them to feel great. Now they want to give back, and they want to do something that they feel great about too. And they're going to give you a referral. So 
when you get a referral, immediately acknowledge it. Send them a gift in the mail, a gift card, flowers, um, Omaha steaks, anything, but acknowledge the referral because that's why they're giving it. They want to be thanked, just like they're thanking you for the great work you did. You should thank them when they do something good for you. And you know that's that's how word of mouth works. Um, and when you get a referral, when somebody comes in from a referral, take care of them. Do do good things for them uh, because that referral that is into your office is already pre-sold. They're in your office because of a good recommendation. You don't have to sell them. Uh, you know they're not a, a patient that. Uh, found you online and you have to prove to them you're do going to do a good job They already know you're going to do a good job because they got a referral from their friend over it. So Keep that in mind um, So just to quickly recap I'm pulling into the airport here uh, The important things from today's podcast is are the important points are um, Make sure that you are entering the conversation you are getting inside your patient's head and speaking their language. Uh, you know, speak to their problems and speak with answers and give them a lot of answers. Give them all kinds of great information because that's how you're going to win them over. And the second point, uh, the takeaway, is that with referrals, um, make sure you acknowledge them, make sure you thank them. Those, those referrals are just gold in your chest. Uh, we had chatted earlier about the uh, the Swift Kick video critiques. If you are interested in getting one for your practice, uh, just click on the training button at the top of the page and click on Swift Kick. Uh, and uh, you can learn more about how to get a Swift Kick for your dental marketing and your dental website, uh, where we'll show you, you know, everything you're doing right or possibly doing wrong. So that's all for today. Colin Receiver here saying, keep moving forward.